I moved into my current house with my parents about three years ago in 2006. It seems so long ago now that the number is in front of me, but you're not here to listen to me reminisce about times that have since passed. So I'll try my best to get right to the point without adding too much unnecessary fluff. My name is Alex. I'm 15 years old and I've been trying to convince my parents that something is seriously wrong with our house. You see, the first few years that we were here were fine. Nothing out of the ordinary. I had actually loved the place. My bedroom here was much bigger than the one at the old house, providing a lot more space for my gaming setup. But recently, within the last couple of months, I found something in our basement that I'm not entirely sure is actually as real as I think it is. Maybe I really am going crazy. It's probably why my parents won't even bother to find out about what I'm talking about. Good one, they tell me. You're being paranoid. I figured that if they weren't going to take my word for it, then I was going to need to present them with some hard evidence of it. For both them and anyone else who can do something about this. If they can do something about this. Luckily enough, my parents had purchased me a camcorder for my 14th birthday. I had expressed some interest in film and video production. Up to this point, I had used it to create some amateur movies with friends from school, which were mainly just short clips of us walking through the woods and attempting to look frightened. Nonetheless, it being summer vacation helped me to be able to do this undisturbed. They more than likely assumed that I would be doing nothing but sitting in my room playing video games anyway. Not that I blame them in all honesty. Once I knew my parents had both left for work in the morning, I sprung up out of bed and grabbed my camcorder, not even realized that I hadn't taken the time to get dressed first. So I merely slipped on a t-shirt along with my pajama pants and my socks before beginning to head downstairs. I made sure to give every room above the basement a quick look through in order to make sure that I was the only one in the house at the time. After which I stood at the basement door, putting my hand on the knob and taking a deep breath. It wasn't that I was having second thoughts, necessarily, but I considered things that could potentially go wrong before ultimately deciding the risk was worth it to prove my claims. So I opened the door and took my first steps down the creaky stairs, reaching over to my right and hitting the switch to turn the basement light on. Our basement itself wasn't something to write home about. It was what you would usually expect. A cold, brown-painted concrete floor and wall rectangular expanse with wood support and insulation lined in the ceiling. Old dusty washing machines, piles of both dirty and freshly clean clothes in an assortment of different baskets. Cobwebs lining every corner of the room, with centipedes worming their way underneath the cracks in the walls. I made it to the bottom of the stairs before taking a left and heading into the more recreational side of the basement. Although the only thing that truly made it recreational was a simple lawn chair and an old coffee table, one that I'm sure hadn't been used in the past several months. Nonetheless, I soon made it to the thing that I was talking about. The wall that was opposite the lawn chair and coffee table. Call me crazy because in a minute, I'm sure you're going to be asking what could be so wrong with a simple wall. Well, this wall that was slightly darker than the rest, even those immediately to both its right and left, it had this shadow that was eternally cast onto it, even when there wasn't a light source or object to create one. And sometimes it flickered, as if it were a light bulb. I've seen it happen before, and I saw it taking place yet again right before my eyes. The first few times that it happened, I could have sworn it was just my imagination, but now it was clear that my imagination had nothing to do with it. I thought that was the strangest part of this entire ordeal. I had come down to look at it before and thought the out of the ordinary phenomena would end there, until I got the balls to touch it. I mainly wanted to see if there was something that I was missing, that maybe it had something to do with the paint, or I just had something really wrong with my eyes. But that was me trying to rationalize something I didn't understand, because yesterday I had grabbed a broomstick and shoved it right up against the wall expecting some paint to chip or some material to crumble. But no, instead, the broomstick simply went through the wall. I'm not really sure how to describe it in an intellectual or a detailed manner, 
it is as simple and as absurd as it sounds. My broomstick went through a solid concrete wall. I even walked forward with it in my hands at the time, and it continued going deeper in the wall, feeling no obstacles or objects stopping it. To make it clear, there were no holes, no cracks or breaches large enough to fit the width of the broomstick within. It was flat and smooth, and yet the broomstick sunk further in as if it were lodged in quicksand. And then, after some careful but clearly not enough consideration, I put my hand up to the wall and once my elbow had disappeared, I pulled back. There was no pain, no extreme temperature, no bugs. Someone or something waiting to grab, bite, or claw me. It was just shocking, in a way that made me only want to learn more. Maybe I just never noticed it before, but I could have sworn the wall that looked much more normal when we had first moved in. Not that I had ever spent very much time in the basement. Maybe I had no idea what I was talking about. Maybe I just hadn't truly paid attention enough to notice any changes. But last time it was only my arm and this time I was going to put my entire body inside. I wanted to step through to see what was on the other side of the wall. There is a part of me that even considered this to be some sort of hologram projection and that somehow was less insane than what it actually ended up being. But nonetheless, I'll always look back and see this as one of the most ill-informed acts, but the curiosity in me simply couldn't be contained. I needed answers. So with my camcorder still in hand, I approached the wall, reaching out my hand yet again to make sure that it was still passing through. And as you can infer, the result was rather unsurprising. So after I took a deep breath and looked behind my shoulder at the rest of my basement, I stepped forward slowly, my natural instincts telling me that the wall was still solid despite me vanishing further into it. But suddenly I felt like I was being jerked forward and falling. The actual feeling of falling only lasted for less than half a second before I hit the ground again with a thud. My camcorder fell out of my hand as I collided with what I assumed was another floor or wall. The texture under me felt rugged like a carpet with a bit of moisture. I rubbed my head and opened my eyes, thinking that I had fallen into a section of her house that I wasn't supposed to discover. But no, that wasn't it at all. What I saw when I looked up didn't make any sense. It didn't even seem possible. Part of me had wondered if I had accidentally inhaled a hallucinogen or something. In front of me was what I could only describe as a large, messily segmented and built set of rooms, hallways, and corridors. All the walls were covered in this truly awful, bright yellow wallpaper that looked as if a small child had picked it out. It wasn't easy in the eyes in the slightest. I got myself to my feet, looking over to my right and seeing my camcorder on the ground, not broken and still recording. I leaned over and picked it up putting it back in my hand before immediately turning around to get a better bearing on my surroundings. How did I get here? Why was I here? And what was this place? There were a million thoughts running through my head, and even though it was the last thing that I wanted to do, I remained calm. That's what you always do in situations like this. You must remain calm. Panicking helps nothing and no one. I was quiet for the most part in this strange place the only sound being a slight electric buzzy noise. It had an irritating hum to it and I couldn't help but look up to find the origin of it. Seeing a white tiled ceiling with poorly placed fluorescent lights running along it, most of which had possessed a subtle flicker. Hello? I called out. Is anyone there? No response. So I ran up to one of the walls and started pushing on it. The moist carpet squelched a bit beneath my feet as I heaved myself forward in an attempt to pass through the wall as I had earlier but to no avail. I turned and dashed over to the wall behind me, pushing and shoving myself up against it, but it, like the other, was solid. I backed away from the wall, coming to the conclusion that I needed to save my energy if I was going to get out of here anytime soon. And while I imagined many ways this could get worse, it didn't make it any easier to accept the fact that I was trapped. Trapped in this almost otherworldly sub-basement. So I started by wandering down the nearest corridor to my left, 
It seemed to be around 200 feet long with dozens of intersecting halls connected to it on both the right and left walls. That same horrendous yellow wallpaper was consistent throughout. Even the humming and buzzing of the lights above followed me as I walked down the hallway. The fact that it was the only noise present in this building besides the squelching of moist carpet as I walked only further drove me up the wall. It was maddening in the most mundane yet most unsettling way possible. It's crazy how much humans rely on sound for comfort because I had only been in this strange expanse for about a minute and it had already felt like hours. Hello, I yelled once again, hoping for even a semblance of a response. Is anyone, Is anyone here? here? Can, Can you hear me? me? Like the previous attempt, there was nothing in response. Not a sound or sign of another human being. My breathing practically became twice as loud to make up for the dreadful silence. I soon encountered the end of the narrow corridor. I wandered into what appeared to be a much larger rectangular expanse. The basic design and layout were still the same, with multiple other corridors converging in the middle, kind of like an intersection. The lights flickered more heavily in the middle of the intersection, the humming and buzzing becoming almost unbearable. I don't know who approved the funding for this place, but they had to have been out of their freaking minds. I hadn't quite been able to come to a decision about which direction I should have gone at the intersection. All I know is that I wanted to get as far away as possible from that dang buzzing. I scoped out each hallway from where I stood with my eyes, with the one on the left catching my attention the most. Not because I was genuinely curious, but because it actually had something distinct going for it. And by distinct, I meant that it was dimmer than the other three, with only one of the fluorescent lights in the entire visible length of it. But despite the poor lighting, I noticed something about halfway down its length. On the ground was what looked to be a piece of paper laid out on the ground, just a single sheet that contained text written in red ink. And being the only distinguishable proof of life or the presence of other human beings in this place, I began to creep down the corridor and approach it, looking back over my shoulder with the undeniable feeling of being watched as I did so. And I reached down picking up the note as I made it over, only to make the unnerving discovery that the red ink was not ink at all. It was blood. I don't know how long I've been here or how much longer I've got left. I'm scared and it feels like it's been days and I haven't been able to find a way out. All I did was come home from work throw myself into bed and then I was here. I found this paper laying around in here, along with someone's car keys that were laying around and had blood on them. I haven't seen another person since I got here, but I'm not alone here. There's something else lurking in these halls, and it isn't any man or woman. I gotta keep quiet and stay low, or whatever got the guy who had these keys belonged to, it's gonna come for me as well. And whoever finds this, if anybody finds this, keep quiet, stay low, and God help you if that thing hears you. I felt my heart sink in my stomach as I turned to look behind me, only to find nothing but the slight flickering of the lights yet again, but I was more than on edge. As crazy as it sounded, I believed every word that was written here. This wasn't some practical joke or prank. Even the most elaborate of pranksters didn't have the resources for something like this. I can't count the number of times that I've seen a horror movie where something that's obviously not a joke is treated like one by the protagonist. And guess what? Well, they end up dead. There was no name or other information on the note. And since I was made aware that there might be something bloodthirsty lurking in here with me, the last thing that I needed to do was carry around this note and have the smell of blood on me. So I left it, dropping it right at my feet, and I began heading further down the corridor into a cylinder-shaped room. It was still more of the same as far as design and architecture went. I took another deep breath, preparing to head down the right corridor of the cylinder room, but before I could even move an inch, I heard a sound that made my blood freeze. The rest of me stayed right where I was by extension. The sound in question was a loud, ear-shattering screech that didn't sound all that far from behind me. I stood there completely terrified while my previous confidence quickly had drained. 
I could only hope that I wasn't seen by whatever it was. And I wasn't, not yet anyway. Once I had mustered up the courage to finally turn around, I didn't see anything behind me. It was still the same yellow walls and moist carpet. And yet it somehow became even more sinister than before. And that thing wasn't what killed the person who wrote the note. Whatever this being was, I could now hear it getting closer. Its footsteps were quick and frantic, so I picked up the pace a little bit. My slow march turned into a brisk stroll, and I couldn't help but feel like my heart was going to explode out of my chest from the dread the situation had filled me with. I made a left turn, and then another before booking it down into a wide corridor before making a right. This place really was a nonsensical maze. The architecture made absolutely no sense, but I refused to let this yellow wasteland become my grave. And the creature shrieked again, but this time the tone was slightly changed. Now sounding a bit more celebratory and more triumphant, as if it had accomplished something that it extracted joy from. It was only once I heard what came next that I understand why. No, 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 no! Came the desperate, horrified screams of what sounded like and a dull man knew that he was about to meet a truly awful fate. I couldn't pinpoint exactly which hallway or room this chaos was coming from. All I know is that it wasn't more than 30 to 40 feet away. Regardless, I wasn't intending to play hero against some creature that I hadn't even seen the appearance of. Stop! Stop! No! The man began to cry out, only to be cut off by his own shriek, accompanied by the sound of bone snapping and flesh tearing. His cries soon became gurgled, only lasting a few more seconds before he was drowned out by the sound of aggressive snarling and growling. At this point, I was sprinting, tears of both stress and fear forming in my eyes. I quickly raised my fingers up in order to wipe them away and keep them from blurring my vision as I ran. I eventually found a tight, almost closet-sized space at the end of one of the hallways. I didn't hesitate to slip inside and get myself out of sight as soon as humanly possible. Once in, I headed to the corner furthest from the opening, sat down and put my knees to my chest before shoving my face in my arms and taking surprising care to not be too loud, lest I want to draw that thing over and then really have something to cry about. I could only think about how I really might die here, that I'll be the next victim of whatever that monster is. If there were more people that were alive and trapped in this, whatever this place is, then I have to try and find them and make a plan to get out of here once and for all. I let myself stare into the darkness of this crevice as I sat there with the illusion of safety, while still in more terror than ever. I only just now realized that I dropped my camcorder in all the chaos of reacting and running, but most of me honestly didn't care. Proving a point wasn't worth it the moment I fell into this place. I should have left the wall alone. I should have just minded my own business and not poked my nose where it shouldn't have been. As helpless as I felt, I know my idiotic actions had a part to play in the predicament that I found myself in. But I was here now and I had to grapple with the reality of the less intelligent moves that I made. If I was going to get out of here alive, the last thing I needed to do was to sit here and mentally check out. I needed to be on my toes and alert. So once I had mustered the strength to stand back up, I did just that. I was still no superhero or brave soldier, but I was someone who wanted to survive. Someone who wanted to live to share a story I'm sure most would not believe. I quietly walked over to where I had entered the small den, turning to peek my head through the skinny opening into the larger hallway. But I immediately froze when I heard footsteps, footsteps that weren't heavy or slow but abundant and quick as if whatever was moving was moving on far more than just two lambs. They were coming from down the corridor to my left. I could make out the fact that whatever it was, it was going to turn the corner at any second. I retreated back into the den and got as far away from the opening as was physically possible, but my morbid curiosity as to whatever I was trapped in this maze with, it couldn't be contained. It just had brutally killed someone, so any sort of negotiating or attempting to reason with it was out of the question. All I could do was sit here and wait as it began to walk down the hallway, approaching closer and closer to the den. Once again, its footsteps were soft, yet horrendously abundant. 
It sounded more like scurrying. It had this almost tapping-like rhythm that made my skin crawl. Like a spider the size of a dog running down a hallway. I held my breath as it approached, only letting myself exhale when absolutely necessary. I didn't dare poke my head out the entrance or attempt to get a direct look at it. But the shape of its shadow on the wall behind the den opening did more than enough to make sure that I never forget this experience for the rest of my life. The lowest part of its body looked to be composed of at least a dozen thin but long limbs that all moved in unison with one another in a twisted uncanny manner, like a centipede that had been sloppily stitched together. Above that set of horrific legs was a long rectangular frame with dozens more bent and thin limbs protruding from each side of it. I couldn't even tell if this thing had had, definitely not one that I could make out with the shadow. Who in their right mind would keep a monstrosity like this in here? Was it locked up? Did it kill the people keeping it contained and get out? Is that why this place is abandoned? Even if I did have answers to all those questions, it still doesn't explain the fact that it seems like I'm far from the only average person to end up trapped in here. It really was something out of a child's nightmare. Anyone's nightmare in all honesty. It stopped only feet in front of the entrance to my den. I prayed to every god that I could think of, hoping that it wouldn't detect or sense me. The creature, whatever it was, let out a low growl. A far departure from the pitch of sounds it was making previously. I could feel it vibrate the wall that my back was against as I held my breath. Even if I wanted to make a sound, I couldn't. No noise could escape me. My terror was busy holding it in. It seemed to turn side to side as if in the middle of looking for something. But the creature didn't move in either of those directions. Instead choosing to continue to move forward and to turn the corner down another hall, allowing me to live for another day, at least for the time being. I made an escape while I had the chance, busting out of the entrance to the den and immediately making a mad dash for the left in the lightest footsteps possible. Nearly right after turning the corner, I spotted my camcorder on the floor, at the far end of the hallway. It had been smashed with dozens of broken off pieces all over the area surrounding it. All the footage and proof that I had were gone. I wasn't aware at the time if there was some way to extract or salvage anything off of it. I could only wonder how mad my friend would be when I tell him all those short films that we created using the thing were toast. But there wasn't much time to mourn the loss of my hard work, so I kept moving. When I made it back to the cylinder room this time, I chose a different path to go down. Last thing I needed was to go anywhere besides the total opposite direction of where that thing was headed. I was now more than alert than ever as I trekked through this nonsensical expanse, aware that there is far worse waiting for me in these walls than simple starvation or severe loneliness as a result of isolation. In all honesty, I've always loved my privacy and being away from others, but not like this. There was more of the same everywhere that I went. Yellow walls, white ceiling, and smelly moist carpet. The hum buzz of the lights became a background song at a certain point. I had just accepted the reality that it wasn't going to stop anytime soon. Regardless, I took three left turns and then three right turns before heading straight for what felt like nearly a quarter of a mile then taking another left. I thought that I was surely leaving the creature in the dust and that it would never find me in this endless maze. But as I was dashing down one of the corridors, I noticed something at the end that caught my eye. Something that I thought might be my ticket out of here. My saving grace and so I slowed down. Let myself take in a few deep breaths and try to get my heartbeat back to a more reasonable speed. I then looked back over at what had my attention, making out what looked to be two thin, long objects protruding out from the ceiling. The distance made it difficult for me to make out details in the shapes, but the colors consisted of a dark blue for the majority of these objects' lengths, with them ending in a light brown towards the bottom. Please, I whispered out loud, please let this be it. My predictions were generally optimistic. I thought that I'd be able to climb my way out of these walls and be free. But as I got closer, so did the reality of what these so-called objects actually were. 
It had gone to a point where I was only around seven or eight footsteps away from these things, and as I looked up, my bottom jaw hung ajar. They were legs, human legs, leg which had protruded from a section of the ceiling where the tile had been removed, although from the looks of it, it was more like violently torn and or busted off. I had morbidly assumed the rest of the corpse was laying along the other tiles within the ceiling. How did I know that it was a corpse? Well, it definitely wasn't just the pair of jeans and old boots the legs were covered in, but a foul stench as well. A stench that was irrefutably rot and decay. One that I had only ever experienced when walking near dead animals in the woods and near my house. Except here, it had been cranked up to eleven. I threw my left hand over my nose, fighting the urge to lose my lunch as I looked up in horror. There I was, standing just several feet underneath a pile of rotting meat that was once a fellow human being, a fate that could only have just as easily become mine if I didn't get lucky. But what could have possibly done this? Did the creature chasing me possess the ability to scale surfaces? Its anatomy seems to suggest that it might be the case. And if it didn't, then that means there was something else that I had to watch out for in this maze. The thought of which did nothing to help me feel any better. Eventually, the vomit that had risen its way into my throat had overpowered my efforts to keep it inside. I took my hand away, opened my mouth, and all over the wall it went. While the smell of rot continued pounding its way into my nostrils, I had to turn back to get away from it as soon as possible. But just as I had regathered myself enough to start running and find a new way to go, the sound of many rapid footsteps in succession made me quickly rethink my actions. I slammed the brakes on harder than I ever had before, as I heard them coming from around the corner closest to my left. That thing, it was coming back, coming back for me, and I'm sure the smell of the body directly above me didn't help much either. I stood there, frozen like the terrified moron that I was. Truthfully, there is a part of me that wanted to give up and accept my fate. To let this, whatever this was, kill me and get it over and done with. But that quickly dissipated once I saw one of that thing's legs begin to wrap around the corner at the end of the hallway that I was looking at. It was a grotesque, black, almost asphalt-like color. A bit of blood staining the tip that also stained the wallpaper. My fighter, more precisely, flight instincts kicked into gear. I didn't bother sticking around to get a better look at what I knew was a truly horrifying appearance. I turned and ran once more, reaching the opposite end of the hallway in mere seconds, before immediately making a sharp left turn into another. I heard the creature let out a blood, a chilling screech as it gave chase, those many legs stampeding along the carpet and the walls as it pursued me relentlessly. Any effort to be subtle or quiet was now in vain. I made a few more random turns both left and right, hoping to confuse the beast, but my efforts seemed to be pointless, as I was still within its line of sight despite what I had done to get out of it. I often wheezed as I looked for anything, anything that could take me to a higher or lower elevation. Stairs, an elevator, a ladder, because I was more than sure that it would fall victim to fatigue long before my pursuer did. After a few more twists and turns, endlessly trying to make myself as elusive as possible. I began to slow down as my exhales became quicker. My face went red and sweat began to drench my face. A stitch in my side began to form as well. I knew that I was doomed if I didn't find anything soon. I truly thought that things couldn't have gotten any worse than the terrifying sequence in which I was currently trapped. But this strange dimension had an excellent way of proving me wrong. Without looking, I made another left as I heard the creature shriek yet again behind me, alerting me that it was still in hot pursuit. I tried my best to keep my pace as I dashed down the hallway that I had just turned into, looking at the floor for a few seconds as my muscles ached and cried out for mercy. Even the adrenaline couldn't keep me going forever. When I looked up, however, I was met with the sight of a dead end. No turns or other corridors. There was no way to go but the way that I came. I was only several feet in front of the wall that cut me off. I tried to turn and make a mad dash back the way that I came, only for the creature to leap out from around the corner and cut me off, 
forcing me to stumble backward and abandon my decision as I fell right on my butt. Its centipede-like legs wrapped around the wall once again as they reached forward. The creature then begins to move its body from around the corner, revealing more of its appalling appearance to me as I crawled backward in utter disgust. Saying that it looked like a mutant centipede would be an insult to such a creature. I had trouble believing even God himself could conjure up such a monstrosity. The entity's skin was a dark, near pitch black tone of color, with jagged streaks of dirty white patterns running along it that looked more like scars than any sort of natural anatomical patterns. When the beast stood to attention, it had to be well over seven feet, absolutely dwarfing me as if I were a toddler in the presence of a grown man. The entire perimeter of its actual body had those thin limbs protruding from it, all of them moving in unison with each other. Once again, a few of them still possessed blood on their tips, who I'm assuming belonged to the man that I heard die screaming earlier on. The body of the creature was a sharp rectangular shape. It mostly lacked features save for the giant gaping hole towards the top, which I had concluded to be its mouth. One without any teeth, just a pitch black, voidous hole. This thing knew that it had me cornered. Each end of its mouth contorted in a fashion as if it were trying to smile at me but it just about lacked the necessary muscle structure to do so. Regardless, it wanted me to know that I was trapped, at its mercy for it to kill me in a gruesome, agonizing way. I was going to become its plaything and its food. I still had some self-preservation left over, despite the rational part of my brain telling me that there was nothing that I could do. But I managed to get to my feet nonetheless, beginning to back up as the creature slowly lurched forward. Dozens of its limbs all moving in tandem with each other. Please, I announced softly, holding my hands out in front of my face as I continued backing up while my legs trembled. And just as I was expecting myself to hit the wall that was behind me, I felt my body suddenly jerk backward, as if I had just been yanked by something powerful. I yelped as my back impacted what felt like a hard carpet surface, and suddenly things weren't nearly as bright. I pulled my hands away from my face, revealing an entirely new environment around me. A library. Just a plain old library. The walls were just a plain light brown color, and the ceiling was tiled, and there were fluorescent lights. But they weren't buzzing or flickering. And the carpet itself didn't feel moist either. Just like regular everyday carpet that was actually maintained. I coughed for a few seconds, trying to comprehend what had just occurred. In a fury of confusion, but it clicked soon enough. I had passed through the wall, the same way that I had passed through the one that had me end up in that yellow-colored death trap in the first place. But doesn't that mean the creature could follow me? That single question made me quickly tense my muscles as I prepared to throw myself up to my feet, only to be stopped halfway by the comforting sound of an older woman's voice. Are you okay, young man? I turned to seeing several different people all around the library with their eyes on me, some in lounge chairs reading books, some at the desk in front of computers, and some standing next to shelves with books in hand. I almost caught a glimpse of the woman who had spoken, who I had guessed correctly to be on the older side, with long gray hair and wrinkly skin, dressed in a button shirt and khakis with a pair of thin glasses on. What? This is home, right? I said, letting out a few more coughs. Everybody shared glances with each other, more than likely thinking that I was in some sort of state of delusion. The older woman informed me that she hadn't seen me enter the library, that everyone had heard a sudden thud and there I was, sprawled out on the floor and coughing, so she came over to see if I was okay. The police were contacted to come and take me home. I obliged, wanting to make everything as easy as possible after what I had just gone through. But during everything that transpired, the library staff making the call, my parents talking with the officers, all I could think about was that place and that thing. You see, what made it even more confusing was the fact that I had entered that place several hours before my parents were supposed to arrive home. Yet I could have sworn my whole ordeal there lasted no longer than an hour and I was never knocked unconscious or asleep at any point. Nonetheless, I'm now writing this to try and make sense of what had happened to me, but I don't think that'll ever truly happen. 
I'm sure no one will really believe my story, but it helps to get it out there anyway, at least for my own sanity. I have my first appointment with my new therapist next week, and not by choice either. Therapy's never really been my thing. But I guess that's what happens when you ramble to your parents about getting stuck in a different dimension and running from mutant creatures with impossible anatomy. Not that I'll even attempt to tell her any of that. Although I'm sure my parents might do it for me when first meeting her. But if I've learned anything from all this, it's that I'll never, and I mean never, go near that wall again.